In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an untraceable ghost off-grid laptop. You can also call it a burner laptop or a zombie laptop, and I'll explain what I mean in a minute. This video is for educational purposes only. I do not condone any illegal activity, and I'm going to show you a disclaimer in a second. But the whole purpose of this video is to show you how hard it is and how close to impossible it is to stay undetected, stay unnoticed, and to build a ghost laptop. I made videos about this stuff in the past, and I've learned a lot in the year and a half that I've been doing these videos on YouTube, and I've learned a lot from the community, and I want to share it with you guys. So let's get to the disclaimer, and then we can start this video. Disclaimer. This video is for educational and ethical cybersecurity purposes only. I do not condone or encourage any illegal activity. Everything shown here is intended for personal privacy, research, and experimentation in controlled environments. Always follow your local laws and use this knowledge responsibly. Now, I don't want anybody to get in trouble, and that's why I'm making this video, because I don't want you to have a false sense of security when it comes to these laptops and ghost laptops and becoming invisible. The whole point I make these videos is because the, for privacy experiments, I'm experimenting and uh, I'm learning and I'm learning how um, to stay private. Um, this is, I want to call a privacy experiment. So now that I'm done with the disclaimer, um, again, don't want to get you guys in trouble. That's not what I do this stuff for. This is for educational purposes only. Now that that's all out of the way, let's start talking. So the first step is where you're getting the laptop in the first place. You cannot buy a laptop at a store and use it for this stuff. It just, you can't do it. What you need to do is you need to get a laptop from like a garage sale. You want you don't want anything tracing back to the laptop at all. So you wanna get a, either a garage sale, go dumpster diving, get a bunch of used broken laptops and piece a zombie laptop. So a zombie laptop is where you take hardware components um, a motherboard or you get pieces and you just use zombie a laptop together with all different pieces from all different components of all different types of laptops um, you can do that um, then even there you should strip down the laptop so i got one right here so unfortunately this one is a used amazon i bought from amazon so this one is one i shouldn't be using at all because you can trace it back to a buyer um it, let's say i got this at a garage sale the things i would get rid of right away is the hard drive. We're not going to need a hard drive for what we're going to be doing. We're going to be running an operating system off of this flash drive. So right now, this is called Tails Linux. I have tons of videos about all this stuff on my channel. Tails is probably one of my favorite operating systems. It lives inside of the RAM. So your whole your whole computer, no hard drive. We'll be taking this out in a second. Runs off of the RAM. So it's it's all temporary memory. And what happens is if you shut down Tails properly it will erase everything in the RAM and it's as if you were never here. There's no data saved. You gotta make sure you don't use persistence. So make sure you don't save anything to this at all. There's a way that you can't even make the mistake of saving anything onto it. Make sure you don't use persistence mode. So with the RAM even further, if you don't trust it, I like getting computers that don't have the RAM um, baked, into the, baked into the motherboard. I would rather have RAM where I could take out myself so if I really wanted to, after I'm done using the computer, I would take this RAM stick and snap it in half and throw it away or whatever. Um, because uh, there's a thing called cold boot attacks where they can take, anybody can take this RAM after it's been shut down and they can try to get whatever data that's on it. Um, so you need to be careful with that. So RAM that you can take out, physically take out and break um, is probably the best. And the operating system should only be running off of this. You don't need a hard drive to use Tails. Just make sure the computer boots into Tails and you'll be ready to go. So after you buy your laptop, um, after you piece together a laptop, you need to remove the components. So remove the hard drive. You're not going to need that anymore. And then other things that help identify your laptop would be your, your NIC, your Wi-Fi card or anything that does the networking. You need to disable this. I would even take it out. So I'm going to take this out right now. So I'm getting rid of the Wi-Fi card. So get rid of that because this will identify you depending on what Wi-Fi card you're using. They can, people can see it and they can identify, oh, this person's using this type of computer. And then they could trace the computer back to something else. So one other step you would do is you get one of these external um, Wi-Fi adapters and that's how you will connect to Wi-Fi with it. And these things are great because they also support monitoring modes. If you're doing pen testing of any sort, uh, this is going to be better for you. 
where these usually these little Wi-Fi uh, cards here are uh, very limited of what they can do. So take the antennas off, take um, take the whole physical thing out. You're not going to need the Wi-Fi card or the hard drive. You don't want any data saving to this device at all, and you want to be able to take the RAM out completely. Next step, we're going to be removing the camera. So I already did it on this one. Uh, the camera microphone is completely ripped out. And people say, oh, why don't you just turn off the mic? Why don't you just turn off the camera? It's not the same. Just because you put a little shutter over it and you, you have your computer say it's turned off doesn't mean it's turned off. You can manipulate software to make it look like it's not recording. So you're better off just not having it at all. I would say just remove it. Now, there's some fancy laptops out there where you can physically, there's a power switch where you can physically turn it on and off and it can physically cuts the power. But anything that's software-based, forget it. It's basically just lying to you. Um, it can be lied to you. And another fun thing, so let's go ahead and flip this over. I would even remove the speakers. The reason why you remove the speakers is that these speakers can actually be reversed into microphones, believe it or not. So one other thing I would take out. So between the speakers, a microphone, camera, your Wi-Fi card, your hard drive, that's the stuff I would strip out of the computer. All right, so I am going to be booting into Tails right now. So this pen is actually a USB drive. So basically what I showed you earlier about a bootable flash drive, I'm going to be booting into Tails on this computer. There's no hard drive, nothing. It's going to load into Tails. I'm going to show you the right way to do it. So there is an option to create persistence. So if you want to save stuff, there is an option for that. But for a ghost build and a privacy build, we're not even want to save anything. So you're going to go right up to here where it says Start Tails. And that's it. So let's let it boot up. And the best thing about Tails is that it comes preloaded with all the tools that you would need. So Onion Share for file sharing and creating dark web chat servers for um, communication purposes and uh, the Tor web browser, um, all already pre-installed. So it has Tor already ready to go and it defaults to it. So right off the bat, you're in a secure place. And this is also nice. So if you have a Windows machine and you just want to, uh, if you want to go like on the dark web or experiment with um, Onion Share, uh, you can just plug in this, boot into this, and then once, as soon as you unplug it, you go back to Windows. Um, really cool feature about it. But and one thing I want to train you guys is that it, it looks cool when I unplug this flash drive um, and the computer shuts down. It's like, oh, wow, it's pretty stealthy. But it doesn't really work properly when you do that. So if I was to do this, the computer freaks out because now there's no operating system because everything was running off of this flash drive. Freaks out, shuts down. But what happened was there is probably a little bit of storage and data saved on the RAM. So to prevent that, what Tails does, if you shut this down properly, so we're going to we're gonna boot into this again to show you how to use this properly and how to shut it down properly. So the right way to use Tails is to shut it down by clicking it. So right now, I hit the shutdown button. What happens is right now, it's writing over whatever data that's on the RAM with like ones and zeros. So basically, it's like when you take a tape and you tape over the tape and it erases the old data and puts random data on top of it. So you can never, you can't really access the old data. That's what just happened. So it properly erased it. So is there a chance of stuff being stored on the RAM still and be a victim to a cold boot attack? Yeah, there might be something on there. That's why I recommend when you're done, take out the RAM. And just breaking it or throwing it away or whatever. So now there's nothing to save this computer. It's gone. There's no storage at all. There's no hard drive. The RAM is gone. And what your operating system, anything you just did is gone as well. But even that doesn't protect you fully. So another issue is how you use the internet and how you connect to it and what sites you go to. So just because you use the Chrome tab uh, incognito mode does not mean you're protected. All your stuff is saved. So all the th things you thought that oh, it's not saved, but your history, it, it is. It, they built profiles on you no matter what. Um, so, and when you have a VPN, oh, I'm safe because I use a VPN. Uh, not really, because what happens is something happens, um, you... Basically, they can contact your VPN provider and they'll give, they say log everything you do. They'll track you and uh, they'll uh, they can look at your history and everything. They can give all your information up, everything you did on that VPN. 
So how to get around that? So during the time where TikTok was banned in the US, um, you could use proxy servers. So basically a proxy server, if I can make it so easy to understand, is that you're having a server request this stuff for you. It's kind of like the middleman. So then you can do a thing called proxy chaining, where you have one middleman talks to another middleman. So one middleman talks to another server, middleman talks to another server, middleman, and then gets the web request. So say I wanted to um, get a, I wanted to get a, a site. So my, let's say this is a say this is a computer, right? So my computer sends it to the proxy server. Now the proxy server knows who I am, but this proxy server has no idea who I am and only knows who what this is. And then vice, and it keep, keeps going on. So then this proxy server only knows these two, doesn't know about this one and this one. So the proxy chain, so one, your, your request goes from you to the proxy server one, to proxy server two, to proxy server three, and then gets a web request, comes back, proxy server three, proxy server two, proxy server one, and then to you. Granted, it's slower, but you have all these middlemans in between. And uh, this is how you could manipulate um even your location etc um because the request is being done over there be sent to you in a different way so this is better proxies are better than a vpn in my opinion is it good to use both yeah but just know that like whatever you do is getting tracked now your isp knows what you're doing so if you access the dark web and tor they see that like your isp is going to see whatever you're using so that means they got to use a network that's far away from your so like there's no like, and this is the whole reason why i'm making this video is like there's so much like that can identify you it's crazy and on top of it now you have a met you have an ip address so the ip address brings you to your location now you can spoof your ip address i have videos on my channel showing you how to spoof your ip address every second where it changes so one minute i'm uh i'm in australia another minute i'm in canada uh, one minute another minute i'm over, i'm over in china or i'm bouncing all over the place i can change my ip address every minute then there's a thing where you have you have to spoof your MAC address because right this thing has an identity and has an address right, so you can spoof it to make it different. Um, this way you can't identify what device it is and what it actually is, and you could just it basically lies about its identity. Um, you can spoof that as well. You can spoof the there's a lot of things you can spoof, but sooner or later not, it all could be tracked at some point. Like it, if they really want it enough, and the, and reality is too with these proxy servers. Well, say this one's in Germany. This one is in China, and this one's in uh, New Zealand, right? We have all these proxy servers. So whatever country or entity that wants to get information about stuff, you have to call this provider, Go, it, and it, some of them might not work with them. So, But if they want it bad enough, they can get the information. You leave a digital footprint no matter what you do. And again, this video is to show you how crazy and possible it really is to be ghost so just because you unplug it and you have it on a different network and you take out the hard drive doesn't really mean that you're completely safe you have to worry about your ip address you gotta worry about your network connectivity what network you're connecting to it, there's a lot so there's some devices out there like the usb kill v4 this device sends a devastating shock and fries a computer so it's basically like worthless like whatever data whatever's on it it's just gonna completely fried um, as you see it, like in movies, like, uh, like TV shows, like Mr. Robot, where they take the stuff and they put it in the microwave to fry it. There's tools that can help with that as well. Um, like this one right here. So right now in a flash warning for all you viewers, it's right now sending a devastating shock, but there's a little blocker. So that led light is blocking it. But if I was to take that blocker off, it would send a devastating shock and completely fry this device. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate this live now. So I'm going to kill this computer. So if this is a good time. Uh, if you want to be a channel member, you want to support me in all my videos and my free educational videos and uh, for me destroying computers. I'm going to try plugging it in on this side. And there you go. Oof, it stinks. Yeah, it's like, it smells like it's burning. Look at that. dead so wow this thing stinks actually hold on i'm afraid yeah, i think it smells like it's burning burning so you just saw right there i just shocked the computer and uh it completely killed it so this thing is worthless now but again become a channel member help us support the channel um so you have tools like that that are out there that help fry devices and stuff like that just in case something was to get about to get compromised or something you plug it in and kill the computer and then go from there um kind of makes the computer worthless could they still extract data from it? 
maybe, but it's a, it'll be a way harder than just grabbing the computer and being able to do things. And another thing you have to worry about is things that can identify you. So let's say you do all that and you do, we do everything right on the internet, but if you still log into an account that's yours, you just blew your cover. And if you're accessing sites that track you, even if you have all this stuff, it, it, you're, you're blowing your cover there. So like you gotta worry about everything you do, even your cadence. So when you type, the computer learns who you are. I mean, your profile that they save and your, all your metadata is saved somewhere. You get the way you type, the way you speak, the way you spell, they can identify you. So you, you would even have to like spoof the way you type and it's again, close to impossible. So this video is to show you, Hey, like this is, this is, the, these are the steps you would need to take to be untraceable to so be making burner computers every time. So I, I, it, it's not worth it in my opinion. Um, but if you're somebody that needs privacy or a journalist, the overseas, I mean, th these are the tools you use. You use things like Tails, Linux, uh, even Cubes OS. Um, you can use Kali Linux for pen testing and do the same things. Kali is where you can use those tools too on my, on my channel where, uh, who am I? Um, that's the one that you could change and spoof your IP address, your MAC address, etc. There's a lot of good tools in there that keep you private. And then you have things um, where you could change your IP address every second. I mean, there's a lot of great tools um, we can use with Kali Linux to, too to help when it comes to being private. But if you're just a casual user that wants to um, use the dark web, um, again, for for like using things like onion share dark dark web chat servers like i've been using uh, even with my community to help show them that this stuff's not all evil some of this stuff is actually good for you um it's good to know i mean dark web is a dangerous place but a place for journalists and people free uh, freedom to speak activists and uh, things like that so this video again is for educational purposes only but now that you see like my previous videos, um, like I can't, I learned a lot along the way and I've learned that it's really close to impossible to be completely invisible. And even if you bought a ghost laptop, you bought a laptop at a garage sale, this camera footage of you buying the thing, there's, there's, there's going to be a ring doorbell somewhere or your phone that you're walking with was tracked. I mean, this, there's so many things that can give it away. Let's say your computer is somehow, I don't know why you would do it, but you connect it to a hotspot and it leads to a device. And that device, since you're within range, identifies who you are. I mean, it's just, there's so many things. Safety is an illusion. And that's what I keep promoting on this channel. And you got to keep in mind that everything you do, if you want to truly be invisible, you got to be completely like unplugged. If you learned anything from this video, it should be about how hard it really is to make these ghost laptops, ghost computers. And is it really worth it? Um, always do things ethically. If you're trying to be private, um, when it comes to communications and stuff like that, make sure you're using the right type of network. Um, make sure you're doing the right type of settings on your network, like we discussed. Um, make sure you're using things like Tails Linux. Um, don't just lock on a computer and think you're safe. You're using things like Google, you're using things like Windows, everything like that is tracking you and building it, your digital profile. So that's my uh, that's my take on new ghost computers. So I learned a lot, like I said, um, it's been a while. Um, and thank you all for that said comments in my other videos. Uh, they, you guys have taught me a lot and I really do appreciate it. I'm gonna continue to learn and share what I learned with you guys. And as always, be safe, don't get in trouble. Don't do anything illegal. And remember, safety is an illusion. And I'll see you guys in the next video.